I want to read read some of them real quick. This is uh, Chris Brown. Uh, predetermined temperature, salt the water, heat the oil, season marinated, don't want soggy, don't want burned, thicken, beaten, set the timer, watch and learn, the shell and yolk both say it's time, toothpick is clean, the meal is mine. <laughs> so when's the cookbook coming out? <laughs> That's it. That's the recipe. You go That's from it, there. yeah. I mean, what what a more brutal like what how much more brutal can you get when talking about like cooking something? Like that's very that's a metal <laughs> recipe, right? Welcome to the 34th episode of the Cast Settings Creation. I'm your host, Chris Deering. This is the show where I interview bands and public figures from the MathCore and MathCore adjacent community. If you beautiful people in chat have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in. I'll try to read them aloud. If you'd like to sub, you get access to some exclusive emotes as well as uh, early access to the interviews before they hit YouTube and the uh, streaming services. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, listening to this in your car, I have no idea what I'm talking about. The show is first shown live at twitch.tv slash the Cast Settings Creation. Join us every Sunday and Wednesday for the live cast. With that out of the way, let me introduce our guest tonight, who's dropped yet another banger in I Want to Be Your Friend on Friday, and is my first returning guest. Welcome in, Plastic Bag Face Mask. How are you guys doing? Doing great, sir. Doing pretty well. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, so tell us who you are, what you do in the band. Do you do it first this time? <laughs> okay. Um, I am Patrick Hogan, and I do... Uh, I write the drums, um, and I write a good portion of the lyrics, and I do like half the vocals. And then fill in a blank. <laughs> I do everything else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then uh, Patrick actually wrote all the lyrics on Friends this time. Yeah. And maybe that'll stick, and I don't have to write any more lyrics the rest of my life. And I'll be happy. <laughs> So yeah, it hasn't even has even, hasn't even been three months yet, and you guys are already releasing another album. Why uh, why do it so uh, early? Uh, I probably well, we're very impatient. Even just uh, do I don't know if we talked about this last time, but content, we were just like, ugh, put it out. Even though it was fun hyping it and getting press and doing PR and stuff for it, but that's just like we're not used to that. We're so whenever. I email him a new mix, and I'm like, are you happy with this? Yeah, we're happy with it. Okay, upload it, publish, <laughs> you know, like, and then move on. Like, we don't even really start to, like, talk about it, advertise it that much, and then, because we just want to start writing the next thing. Um, yeah, and then, it, it usually even takes a week to get on, like, Spotify and stuff, and uh, we don't yeah. always wait until we know that it's out. We're just like, yeah, it'll be there. In a few days, but yeah. it's out now. It's on Bandcamp now, but it'll catch up later, <laughs> eventually, on everywhere else. So it's not on Spotify uh, yet? This one is. Oh, we actually okay, did Okay, I was going to say, because I made some day. Instagram stories and put those songs on there, so I kind of figured it would be. Yeah, we, yeah. We're, we're maturing a little bit now. <laughs> Better with it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I mean, then last year, obviously, uh, very open year. I was I'm still not working and just like at home so i'm like well let's just get to work and write you know and i was we were writing a lot of stuff last year we had a lot of you know uh remixes we released last year and in the meantime i was like i'm bored mixing this i'm just gonna write some crap and then <clears throat> and content took a long time with the guest vocals like getting in contact with all these different people and that was another thing it was like yeah let's just um write some gibberish on a keyboard <laughs> and make less that's basically friend it's just like open up guitar pro and smash my computer and then like make myself <laughs> play it later so yeah it was, it was like not long after uh frozen meat conspiracy came out from from my time bomb project and then right they're like short um absurd songs are very satisfying and so we'll do that and yeah. it's very satisfying so yeah, that actually, Time Bomb was, like, my direct inspiration for Friend. <laughs> was, like, okay, <laughs> if he can, like, write all this, type on us all this on a computer, compose on a computer blind like that, or deaf, um, I want to try that out, too. <laughs> Wait, deaf? Like, without jamming, jamming okay, or riffing on, I got you. you know, first. So it's just, like, let's just, like, type, like, calculate some riffs and some songs. Mm -hmm 
on on the <clears throat> on a tab and then like i guess we weren't Here deaf because we we would like i would press play be like does this sound cool and uh and then then we'll hear it or be forced to play it later and record that okay I got so that's that's why i mean i feel like friend probably doesn't make any sense compared to like coming after content <laughs> like <laughs> stylistically i was gonna say like the songs <clears throat> definitely are a lot shorter this time around mm -hmm. than uh than i want to be your friend yeah or, yeah i want to be your friends a lot than shorter content. than content there we go mm -hmm. yeah well you you've noticed this before too like our first handful of albums were like let's max out the cd let's get to 80 minutes let's get to 60 minutes this and then like six minute song which has a couple like over 10 minutes and you don't you don't have the attention span for that anymore like <laughs> or listener i feel like listeners don't like half the time so it's like let's just make like short fun songs like mm -hmm. you don't have to commit to yeah no filler it's just all like, banger yeah no like filler the most, the most like grounded in in our inspirations too because because we started with like a huge see you next tuesday inspiration and so writing short fast just like almost song clips they're exactly yeah. what we wanted to do and we just never did it like 12 <laughs> years never, later we never tried to actually like reach that uh influence so besides but, uh, that what uh what else is different between this one and content like um, any recording style differences or uh different influences you're trying to bring in not really just like um i did want to try and like just push like what's the most absurd like stupid leads and like sweeps that I can write with that <laughs> I would have to like edit together because I cannot possibly play that in real life, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's a ton of studio magic. And I know that like that's cheap and lame, but also like I don't, I'm, I'm a shitty guitar player. I just like to compose things <laughs> like, um, and this is like, to me at least, this doesn't feel feel like like this is like a spin-off album you know like if we were like a film franchise <laughs> this is like our <laughs> side piece or like a side little tv spin-off show Fre <clears throat> friend is and then content is like the latest feature movie you know of mm -hmm. like writing an album you're uh the so, other chachi from 50 or from what is it happy days yeah <laughs> <laughs> So but, how much um, editing does go into the album? Like, are you editing every single note? Or is it just, um, like, the best take, just repeat it over? Yeah, most of Friend, because I, like, committed to, like, I'm just gonna do some stupid stuff in these songs, That that is, like... I remember last time, I think we were talking about, like, MIDI guitar and, like, how I discovered that that existed. There's none of that in here, but it might as well be. Because it's like it's it's recorded guitar, but it's edited as if it was MIDI um, for a majority of it. The stuff that's like really fast and really tight. I just wanted it to sound really cool <laughs> and uh, I gotcha. that I cannot do. I didn't want to spend like a headache amount of time working on it because, it, like I said, it was a side thing. Like um, I just recorded some songs, some new songs very recently. And that's as natural as it gets. Like that's me playing like maybe one or two takes complete. And it's very different. Like it sounds more like content songs, which are which are easier to play. But um it's just like kind of the vibe I wanted to go for. <laughs> and but other than that, like recording wise, no, it's like it's um pretty straightforward. Um I mean even content is kind of straightforward, but there's a little more like this interludes or this intros to songs that are like maybe some stylized stuff this is like i mean you can tell there's no filler at all there's no effects it's just like really straightforward just a guitar straight into an amp there's like no pedal effects or anything and just weirdness a lot of the songs don't have like uh space between them I, I don't think any of them had space between them actually they all just kind of yeah. like run right into each mm -hmm. other and i didn't notice that it was hitting other songs until I was like reading your lyrics along with the songs. I was like, Oh, this is a whole other song. Like I would just have this playing <laughs> in my car and uh, didn't even recognize it. So why did y'all decide to do that? Are you trying to make it like sound like one long piece? Yeah, actually it was written as one piece. And then we were, I would, I would 
<clears throat> kind of feel satisfied with like a a section and then i i write on the uh the tab like this is the end of the song this is a new song but it would still be one piece composed and then i would just export that and record it that way and that's another thing that we're kind of gonna move away from because the content too is like it's very um squished together because we were like man it's really cool when songs fade into the next song really clean right <laughs> but editing that not not editing but like you can hear a lot of you know what it is? It kills a shuffle. If you ever like make a playlist or shuffle a playlist with our songs in it, some of our songs you'll hear the tr tail end of like the last line of the previous song come okay. into the intro of the next song, and that's a little ugly to me. So I we're gonna try and not do that anymore. <laughs> have some have some fade outs. Bring some fade outs back. You know, we okay. have a uh, we have written other albums like that though, like uh, Pangea. And oh yeah. Our that was one Human song. Trade, um was all one song and then um and those are both on curation now. And then like even the original Riff Soup was like eighty of minutes of drums just about and then it, it got it's just when we when we decide where the song ends and then we decide the order we want to put it in, you lose that flow. But if you hear it you can there is an order to it that if you shuffled it the right way you could hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we have, yeah, that's been a thing that we've done sometimes. So Patrick, a lot of the lyrics seem to deal with, with food. Were you hungry while you were writing these <laughs> lyrics? Um, <laughs> uh, so these lyrics, uh, um, like it's so, this album's so chaotic. I had no idea what I was going to write. Um, and usually we play song titles after we write the lyrics and the songs are done. But this was the first time we just like decided that track one was this song, track two was this song. And then I really tried to focus in on what the song title was referencing. And so I think just a lot of the song titles happen to reference food. Um, <laughs> and so therefore, yeah, it, it just worked out that way. <laughs> yeah, because we just had like a bank, a storage bank of song titles that were like, this is funny. Let's name a song like this eventually. But then we kind of like shot ourselves in the foot by making a album of 15 really short songs. So now we like almost depleted that entire list mm -hmm. of titles of cool titles to come back to. But, um, yeah, basically <laughs> Time to build it, like, it back well, up, man. Fill that yeah. Thing yeah. Again. <laughs> like, uh, Hey, we have like Ronald Reagan is a cool title. What would the lyrics be about for that? And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's about Ronald it's Reagan with the Reagan. I like it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I was there's some there's some moments where I would like finish doing a take and I'd have to ask him like, what did I just say? What does this mean? You know. <laughs> uh, so I want to read read some of them real quick. This is uh, Chris Brown. Uh, Predetermined temperature, salt the water, heat the oil, season, marinated. Don't want soggy. Don't want burned. Thicken, beaten, set the timer, watch and learn. The shell and yolk both say it's time. Toothpick is clean. The meal is mine. <laughs> so when's the cookbook coming out? <laughs> That's it. That's the recipe. You go That's from it, there. Yeah. I mean, what what a more brutal like what how much more brutal can you get when talking about like cooking something? Like that's very a, that's a metal <laughs> recipe, right? That delivery. <laughs> uh so what's the best food to eat post recording? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I want to die after I'm recording. Yeah. Uh whatever uh whatever just doesn't burn the throat, I guess. Nothing spicy. <laughs> <laughs> my uh my bandmate in Keeper, he'll like he'll be like holding a cough drop behind his teeth or like, you know, in his cheek while recording <clears throat> vocals. And then he'll have another cough drop in a mug of water. And still, he's letting it dissolve and he's like sipping that in between takes. Mm. And so now like I have like excess bags of cough drops around my house. And luckily I just freaking find them. And I'm like, oh, and I start popping cough drops and they feel amazing. <laughs> so Dude, what I do, I, I heat up a, a cup of water, put in some apple cider vinegar, some lemon juice and throw a cough Ooh. drop in there. And that's what I drink in between in between takes and then <laughs> have a, a cough drop beforehand to clear out the nasal <laughs> passages and stuff. That's but. a that's gourmet, man. 
As disgusting as what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, baby Vampini well, says, book, thank so. God all the metal I've been trying to cook lately has been coming out of mess. Well, you just follow these instructions <laughs> and it won't, won't be coming out of mess anymore. There you go. That's how you make friends is you cook them the right amount of metal. <laughs> okay, okay. I didn't know where you're going with there. If you're like trying to like, talk about cooking your friends or I was like, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, so who did the cover art this time around? Uh, that was um, a fan from somewhere in the UK, I'm pretty sure England, um, named Ray. Uh, and if you look on our Instagram and probably our Facebook, we have links to their uh, their websites. But um, they've always been very supportive, and we always kind of talk back and forth. And they're excellent; they're an excellent artist. So we uh, we we reached out, and it worked out super well. Yeah. Love that album art. Yeah, her art is very like uh, grindy. A little bit of like power violency, at least like kind of the art styles that I see that are similar, kind of are, are in that like field, um, <clears throat> of like just almost like uh, sharp edges and a lot of line work. And uh, if there's a character like ours, it's like a creepy, nasty character, and that's kind of what because we knew we had this title figured out beforehand, <laughs> and then we're like, Lord, I want to have like. A creepy person or figure or being look like creeping at you in a window you know like hey, i want to i want to be a friend you know so we kind of like uh collabed on that idea to get that image is that you two staring into my windows because i've been telling you to stop doing that man <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> like when's our next interview man <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you don't have any merch for this release. At least I didn't see anything. Yeah, see, um, cause that's <clears throat> kind of rare for us anyway, when we've, what we thought content, like, let's, let's make some stuff for content. And then, uh, and then when they announced the Bandcamp vinyl thing again, they kind of brought that back. We we're like, oh crap, will this line up perfectly? But then they were only doing it for like a certain number of artists mm -hmm. for the rollout and, uh. We weren't going to make the cut. <laughs> We're too small. <laughs> um, so, but I was like, otherwise, I would have been like, this has been cool to like, maybe you can try and get the funding for vinyl through the Bandcamp thing. But uh, it's it's like, I think it's too short. Like, I don't think it warrants uh, physical pressing. Um, On those CDs or anything like that? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not yeah, feeling funny. it. The, the the mindset on this album is like super weird for us because it just feels like a, an EP even though it has like four songs more than content and it's only mm -hmm. like five minutes shorter than content, it still just feels like something we just shoved out there. And yeah. It almost feels like the, the core, core, core release that we had right before content where it's just like a thing that had like a theme. extra and we were like, yeah, here we go. That was really fun. Um, don't expect it again. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cricket Slaves yeah. in the chat tells you is saying to do cassettes. We have other cassettes. We ha I have a lot left over. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I we're learning. We're learning from the content stuff. Is uh, like what sells and what our our people like and want. So uh, moving forward, I'm sure we'll. I mean, I, I was already talking to Patrick the other day. Like, we'll probably stick with what's popping. Yeah. What is that? Oh, that's probably me. I'm probably tapping. So. Oh, okay, okay. I was Stop like, drumming, man. Do something wrong. Like <laughs> But, uh, yeah, because um, I, I, I think I mentioned this bef uh, another time, but, like, I like doing DIY CDs because that uh, comes out like a CD, but I don't like doing DIY cassettes. Uh, it's an investment for cassettes you to get them pressed nicely. And, yeah, I f but I feel like I have a good plan for the next official like real album that we care about will have something cool because you didn't care about this one <laughs> not as much apparently <laughs> but like, but of course i mean like most of our cassettes are just like people reaching out to us so if somebody from like an indie label that just makes cassettes of specific albums like like the whited uh sepulcher ones um wants to do it it's not like we'll say no or anything yeah think. like so. Like I I love labels. I mean, like I've a lot of my other bands have worked with uh, really great labels doing tapes and some vinyl and stuff. So I mean, it's not it's not against physicals. It's just like 
I mean, it takes a lot of work, like, uh, to do the DIY CDs and, um, and then like buying CDs is like out of the question just cause like those factories charge an arm and a leg, like compared to like what we get out of, out of this band. I mean, this band is, it comes, it just comes down to like putting out fun music and recording fun music. Yeah. It's a bit and of an investment. It's an investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially cause like, <clears throat> yeah. Um, if we were going to tour and write on an album for like a couple of years, we we would need a few hundred copies of some of this album to last that long. But if we're gonna record something today and start mixing it tomorrow, <laughs> you know, <clears throat> we don't need to have a hundred a hundred CDs of friend. Yeah, mm. y'all didn't seem to do much promotion at all for this. I think I might have seen one thing, and that was about it. Why didn't y'all yeah. uh, get more contacts and stuff? We just I don't know how to do that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I struggle with that. I don't even like if if anyone follows me, my personal on social media, I never talk about anything except for like this is out. <laughs> Bye. And then Patrick is doing like severe shit posting on Twitter and like <laughs> <laughs> like new album out, check it out, you know, just trying to be like a troll. And that's yeah. working. Like we're getting it's listeners. Like, if you ever see me, you'll see me on like random YouTube videos too. Like, if I can somehow skew the the video into referencing something to do with my band, then I will leave a comment <laughs> about it. And then somebody will be like, "Oh, who's your band?" And I'll be like, "Oh, here you go." And it yeah. actually works. Like it works decently well. But, like uh, any any horror video that has a plastic bag yeah. scene. Like, hey. <laughs> That's that's us. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, but I don't know. I'm just like awkward about that stuff. I don't like people. I, I, it's like I love you for listening to my music, but I don't want to talk about my music. You don't want to <laughs> like uh, scream it from the rooftops or whatever. You don't want to like yeah. feel like you're imposing <clears throat> on somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it. <laughs> Cricket Slam says, "Don't shit post on Facebook." I'm serving 30 days in Facebook jail right now, so so be careful, Patrick. Right? Don't want you in Facebook jail, my man. You should be safe. That's the that's the one place I am not. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how are your other projects going? Um, good. Patrick's like yeah. getting pretty close to some new time bomb being done, or actually, I'm like the one the hold out. <laughs> he just needs my guest vocals, and then another right yeah. yeah and then i just need to mix it uh yeah, and that's that's, that's pretty much it yeah that's, that's gonna be a cool one and then i just wrote a full length for my grind band um elder devil and i just like kind of like surprised them my, my bandmates with it like hey i'm doing nothing at home we're not practicing because of the virus and everything like i'm just gonna like be productive so we have we have three releases like written and demoed for that for whenever we get around to it and then um jesus dude you have three unreleased things for that like a a split an ep and a full length yeah god damn man yeah and then <laughs> um my other my doom bands are in pre-release limbo right now what so, do you mean uh one of them that i will be silent about uh is we're just waiting for the label to like move okay. to move on. I don't I don't know what they're doing behind the scenes. Um and then the other one similar situation but just in a DIY <laughs> level. So no label, but we're just like waiting for shit to move behind the scenes. Okay. So stuff stuff is coming out eventually <laughs> for all of our projects, it sounds like. So how's Shrug going, Patrick? <laughs> uh it's pretty it's pretty still on hiatus um pretty, just yeah. because uh it's like the lowest priority and well you have uh, like a new shrug now kind of if you can if you, you want to talk about that what do you mean um bb oh yeah i can talk about that um yeah so the well i mean that's that's closer to like time bomb than shrug yeah i know but, um but yeah, um, a, a, a guy reached out like a few years ago now, but I'm very slow and uh, wanted just kind of asked if we had any music that he could just do vocals over because he wanted to do vocals. Uh, so I wrote him an EP. Um, I think the band's going to be called Book Burner. I think that's the 
the like solidified. Oh, title. taking that from a uh, pig destroyer, huh? I I don't know. I didn't name say it. Yes, but, say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's he's uh, gonna record vocals pretty soon. We've been talking about it, and so that should be out soon. It's just like a cool little mathy jam. I mean, if you like time bomb, it's it's in the same vein as that. So. Yeah, that should yeah. be pretty cool. So he's I'm he's catching up to, to my number of bands. Yeah. <laughs> slowly but surely, slowly but surely. Yeah. All of mine sound the same though. That's <laughs> <laughs> So I think we might have asked this last time you were around, but I'm asking again just in case. How do you dress your hot dogs? We ask that to everybody now, hmm. it's a tradition. I, I heard Chris's answer uh, Chris Arp's answer and I was like, Oh, I don't remember if we talked about this. <clears throat> um Well, uh I get a nice Field roast brand hot dog that is veggie, <laughs> and oh, I didn't realize uh, you're a vegetarian. Yeah. yeah, and um, my favorite is just Amy's chili and maybe some ketchup, but like that's pretty much it. Okay. So I don't I don't understand a plain hot dog. Like I kind of need it to be a chili dog for to care. You put cheese on that? <laughs> um, sometimes. But it doesn't really like make a difference to me. Like cheese is kind of just like a garnish. And no, no like, onions, no like anything like that. No, get the fuck out. <laughs> no onions. I'm a vegetarian, but fuck onions. Fuck onions. No, I'm a I'm a stupid vegetarian. I don't like a lot of vegetables. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. Right. <laughs> I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Patrick. Um. <clears throat> yeah, definitely start with a a, a veggie dog of some sort. Um. And then we're going chili. I usually go Hormel vegetarian chili, but Amy's is good too. Okay. Um, and cheese or onion for the chili dog. But if it's just the hot dog, then like like a Dijon mustard. I'm I'm very like spoiled that way. I go for the spicy <laughs> mustard. But, Made uh, <laughs> from uh, the hands of some craftsman in another country, like delivered to you. Yes. Here's your mustard. <laughs> but not in like the very messy fancy. way. <laughs> not in the best way uh, Cricket uh, Slams is saying yeah. that I feel like the question's been made due to Holly 100% 100% because Holly Strack kept asking everybody what uh, what they like to put on their hot dogs <laughs> uh, what was the last album you guys listened to? oh gosh <laughs> you're, you're catching my, me at a embarrassing time um Let's hear it. Let's well, hear it. <laughs> uh, I found this band. Okay, I think last time we talked about how I'm trying to distance myself from like deathcore, and not to like offend anybody <laughs> or anything, but um, <laughs> I just happened to find this deathcore band that I was like, this is so indulgent and like just is like the heaviest thing I've heard in a long time in like that style. And it's this band called Brand of Sacrifice. Okay, I've heard I, the name. I don't think I've ever listened to them, though. I think that they are actually the after image, and they just renamed themselves for some reason. But I guess, like, I don't know, technical. They just sound like straight-up deathcore to me. But uh, they had an EP from a couple years ago, and then I think a full length from last year. And I was like, this is just so fun and, like, kind of, like, turns brain off just like listening to some heavy breakdowns and stuff and i've kind of had that on repeat but other than that i've uh uh last year i did like a huge best of 2020 list that was like 200 albums that i listened to so i'm keeping God that damn. up and i'm i have like uh i have like a playlist of just like whatever i find um i'm gonna listen like that comes out this year that i kind of that i care about you know uh, I'll listen to that. So I've been I've been finding a lot of really cool black metal that came out this year, and that's just like my world right now is black metal. You talking about trying to uh, <laughs> distance yourself from deathcore? Y'all are still deathcore, hundred <laughs> percent. I know. I guess so. <laughs> this actually, like, I mean, you you hear about that a lot though, or like metal bands would be like, I barely listen to metal, or like. Rock I do. bands won't listen. You know, they don't listen to their own genre, and so it keeps the ideas fresh um, as well. So I think it, it actually works to our benefit because he, he doesn't get sick of it, and he also doesn't, like, just blatantly steal from whatever is happening right now. Right, it works right. Out. Yeah. And Mathcore is weird to me because, like, I'll listen to, like, the hot new Mathcore album, and I'm like, this is 
fucking amazing. Why does anyone even listen to us? Because, like, this is, like, <laughs> this is the shit. Like, I can't believe they're doing this stuff. But also, I'm, like, I, I, because I'm a musician, I will analyze it. And I'm, like, what are they doing that's so cool that, like, sometimes they're doing less is more kind of thing where it's, like, a pretty raw, groovy riff, you know, that's repeated and it comes out sick. And that, you know, like, like, I don't know. So that's that's one of my takes from like the math core scene right now. It's just it's amazing, and I'm scared of it. But <laughs> when um, there's this new, there's this um, like promo, like kind of blog uh, group out right now called Call Me Armageddon, oh, and yeah. they uh, ha- asked us to be in their compilation <laughs> for 2020 releases, and then uh, they're then they're doing this other cool thing where. It's like make a Spotify playlist of your influences as a as a band, and I was scrolling through my iTunes and I was like, "What did I even listen to? Like, what I don't even what mathcore bands do I even like? And you know that like that formed us like back <laughs> yeah. in the day. I was where I was trying to think. And I'm like, what got us here? I couldn't even remember. <laughs> you know, like like it, it came down to like Sly Opus and See You Next Tuesday as like obvious answers or like you know Norma Jean the Chariot. Number 12, yeah. And it's like, but other than that, it's like, is that all? <laughs> I don't even... Yeah, we're, we're like influenced by the concept of mathcore. Yeah, so yeah. It's listen. It's weird. But anyway, <laughs> Patrick, what, what did you listen to? Yeah, what was your last album, Patrick? Uh, the last, like, new album. Not any album, it doesn't have to, to be new. Well, I've been doing, like, playlists of, of old stuff that I used to really like that I, that's been, like, dead on my phone but i keep it because i'm like yes that's a thing i like to see if i even want to keep it uh so i've been going back and forth between black dahlia murder and suicide silence um and i'm in both of their the the, the point in both of their discographies that are just like not worth listening to but i'm doing it anyway um, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then uh yeah like the last full album that i sat down and listened to was uh the new Haley williams album that came out like yesterday i'm not sure who that is sounds like a pop singer uh she was saying for paramore and now she's oh singing okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. sick man what's your um, favorite era of black dahlia <clears throat> uh well jacob should probably answer that now because he <laughs> is he is the bigger black dahlia fan but like, oh um, man i was old to mid like we've been talking about it um but like yeah. the, the older to middle and then it went downhill oh i really like ritual though uh just because i'm like most familiar with that album yeah i feel like ritual is a good era for you because that was like what we talked about the most yeah. but i've been kind of like talking with him about his homework we both are doing like album homework i'm doing my like year list he's doing like what has what have these bands we listened to in high school been doing lately so he's doing their discography lists playlists and i he's been like i've been asking him what do you think about this black dahlia what do you think about this one but um I yeah, Black Dahlia for me, man, they were like the the big one of the big four gods to me in high school. You know how like what is it? The big three are like Metallica, Slayer, and somebody else. Anthrax. Like Anthrax. For me it's Negative. Black Dahlia Murder. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> for me it's Black Dahlia. Um the agony scene as Blood Runs Black and Through the Eyes of the Dead at the time for me uh black dahlia obviously like kept going a lot longer than those other bands um i know (laughs) through the eyes of the dead were still going but they changed a lot but uh um black dahlia miasma is my all-time favorite like it's still everybody nobody says that that's the best (laughs) album but it is it's the correct answer it's yeah yeah it's crazy (laughs) like those those songs are so like catchy and stand out and have so much passion in them like Going to like statutory ape or like the closer miasma is like one it gives me chills still. Right. It's also the perfect tempo for running. So if you ever wanted to run, <laughs> that's that's a good album to yeah, do. Too. There we go. Get your health uh in- improved. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, So what were your albums of the year for last year? Uh mine? Um Yeah, see. it has to be yours because I have no idea what even yeah. like. I, I, oh, you I just don't keep up with new music, Patrick? No, I just don't keep lists. Oh, so yeah, well, I, off the top of your head, then, what was your uh, what was your favorite? 
I mean, I got. I mean, I I have to see what even came out in twenty twenty. You know what I mean? <laughs> I okay. want you to start listing. I want yeah. to compare our lists next year. Um, mine. Okay, well, only like three albums have come out this year that I've like actively listened to. So yeah. I, I'm... Oh no, I meant last I year. Like it, this year, it's not been long enough to. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Shit. Just drop my fucking phone. Uh. This last year, my albums. I had uh ten albums of the year. Um. All at number one. Of, yeah, <laughs> that's cheating. Yeah, no, it's I mean, like two hundred. The ratio. You, you yeah, the ratio say. equals out. Uh, I guess okay. I'll let I'll let it slide. <laughs> but that's the thing. Okay, um, because I started doing that list like super late in the game, right? Like in uh, September or whatever. I had to start catching up to all these releases when I decided to do this dumb project, <laughs> and because I was like, man, this year is depressing. One. I'm stuck inside all year, so that's depressing, and there's all all awful things going on in the world. Two, none of my favorite bands released anything, so what's the point of listening to anything this year? Like all my, it seemed like a slow music year to me. I don't know why. <laughs> Dude, it yeah, was I don't, it was intense. I, I to me like all okay. My top ten are all but one, all but two artists that are new to me. That okay. and. And then all my other, like, my favorites that I go back to and listen to have been quiet the last couple of years. So I don't know. I don't – just that's just, like, what I, I noticed. You. And – um, but, yeah, like, like some of my favorite standouts were uh, this band from called Crossbringer. And they kind of had, like – they found it sounded like a spiritual successor to Polybian Grandstand to me. Yeah, that's one of the ones I, love... I needed to check out. I heard the name, but I just never, like, sat down and listened to them. Actually, writing They're... it down right now. Yeah, that one's really cool. Crossbringer, um, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ulcerate had a really cool, like, technical death metal album that also sounds like dissonant in the same kind of blackened dissonance way that I like Crossbringer and Plebeian Grandstand for. And then Oculus ha- has like had another follow up to. Um... I should research things before I start talking. <laughs> but uh, th- uh most of it's black metal like Alwinden had a very very beautiful like post black metal album called uh The Golden Hour Endless Forms Most Gruesome it was like really pummeling like sludge album So you're into I like really the black and stuff right now. I that's all I'm into. And then Sam Smith had a new album that I really really <laughs> liked. Who? Sam Smith. I have no idea. The pop singer uh, you know, I don't um, listen to pop that much. <laughs> uh, you've heard. I'm that. more heard true Sam than you Smith, are. Though. I'm more true metal than, than you okay. are. Okay. <laughs> you've almost certainly yes. heard one of his songs walking through like a grocery store or something. Yeah, like Sam Sam's pop in a way that like on commercials and stuff like that. But yeah. like, but musically, I adore Sam's like instrumentation and like it's not most of the time it's not electronic. It's just like it sounds like a a soul band or a, a blues band actually playing and grooving in the studio as they're singing and it's like it just soothes my soul (laughs) (laughs) but other than that yeah it's all black metal because that's just um i I don't know i don't know yeah man talking about how much like came out last year actually uh i did a show i did an episode with uh Taylor Bates and uh, Carson Pace, and uh, we were going over our top 10 albums of the year. Each of us selected 10 albums. We ended up talking about 28 different albums. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's it's, just for it's, like mathy stuff, too, you know? Like, yeah. It was an insane. Well, it's hard to album. narrow down. It's hard to narrow down, right? Like, you, like, it's, you start like, it's like a rabbit hole of like, oh my God, and then this and this. Like, I, I did right. learn by the end of the year, it was a great year for music, obviously. Like, there, <laughs> there was a lot that I uncovered or I found that was like, really awesome but just like on first glance like i had to look at my list because like a lot of those bands were new you know and uh to me or to uh um i haven't even like come back to that album since i heard it for the list and i but like they moved me the most at that time and i had to move on to my other lists after that you know so it's like it's not ingrained in my head yeah. So it, this was also like or last year was also the year of like uh the collaboration you know what i mean so there's gonna be like a lot of new like artist names and stuff like that yeah yeah too. like freaking jacob bannon from converge dropped two like side project albums last year mm-hmm. and i mean 
yeah, people are doing super groups and online collabs and I feel validated now and you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about all I had unless you had something else to bring up. Um what's in the what's in the future for plastic bag face mask? You don't have to get into too specific, but you yeah, have plans for uh, this year, I'd imagine. We Patrick had a connection with someone online that mm. had like oh I want to do a split. And it's probably not a secret, but just just on the off chance it is. We'll <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah, yeah. Just keep it. So yeah, y'all got a couple of, like splits coming up and yeah, things so, like that. Working on a new album, I'd imagine. Yeah, we um so we actually had two songs written like pre content or like right after you finished content, but before it, you were yeah. a friend. I think it was on the tail end of writing content. So back in like late 2019, maybe early 2020, I think I don't remember uh, if it was like I was writing them and I decided not to add them to content. I think it might have been a period of time after content was written. I think it was like a little bit after content and you were like, yeah. okay, it's time to work on the next one. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So, I'll but still you. early 2020 writing some songs and then that just got pushed aside as 2020 started and we started working on other stuff. Um, and then so time goes on. Those songs don't fit anywhere anymore. They sound super like unique to for us, for us. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so we're like, I don't know what we're going to do with this for. And then he gets uh, that person uh, reaching out about the split uh, or voicing they want to do a split. And then we reached out like, hey, let's do it together. And then we were like, let's just put these two songs on that. And then so we'll have everything like off the shelf. Everything's gone. Everything's recorded and released. Then let's write fresh because we actually did have a, an agreement with a band for a while that we're going to do a split with them. We're just like, we need to get all this other stuff out of the way. So we're going we're to have two splits this year. Um, and then we'll see. And then, yeah, I just need to start writing. <clears throat> like I said, I uh, uh, just did um, a full length for my, for my grind band elder, elder devil. So I need to like, kind of get my creativity recharged and then, yeah, back in, back to the office for plastic bag. God, you guys and, just don't slow down at all. That's a lot. Yeah, I don't have anything else to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I mean, I'm hoping too to write write some time bomb this summer because like the one that I'm putting out this year um, is like two years old. The instrumentals are, and I just it kept getting pushed back. It's always like after this thing, and then there'd be another thing. And so, I'm I haven't actually sat down and done time bomb in a long time. So I think that'll be a good. Hopefully, I'll get a bunch of that done this summer, and then I can wait another two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i mean i mean kind of when you get, when you get the ball rolling mm -hmm. it usually rolls pretty fast for us like even depending on or not even depending on the projects like it's, no matter what we do for what projects like it's just intimidating to get back on the horse after you know you just did something like content or friend or whatever and then uh you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do after that. And then you, once you just pick up the guitar again or the laptop, <laughs> in some cases, it's like, oh, this is coming along nicely. It's fine. You it's know, like riding a bike. You, yeah. you just don't forget how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, get those juices flowing, get that creativity going. And I'm sure we'll have an album this year. Yeah. And, and yeah, who knows? One. I mean, another, album. another one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then who knows? Maybe it'll be another like crazy fucking year, and I'll, I'll just be like, Patrick, I have five albums, so uh, <laughs> you want to start working on those lyrics? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll I'll never say no. I just always say okay, eventually, and then <laughs> and then like he surprises me. I'll be like, oh, by the way, I wrote an album. It's uploaded. I'm like, oh shit, okay. And then <laughs> six months later, I'm like, oh, by the way, I did all the lyrics, and they're they're the vocal placements. They're all uploaded. Yeah, and I'm like, and so, oh, okay. And he's like, I got yeah. another album. Here, here you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just trying to keep up with each other. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's all it's all fun. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just going to move out to the intro then, unless you had something else. 
I think that's it for us. Yeah. Alrighty. So Plastic Bag Face Mask wants to be your friend, so do what friends do and check out their <laughs> new album, I Want to Be Your Friend, which came out on Friday. Uh, you guys are on Spotify, all the streaming sites, Bandcamp, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Any other plugs? Oh, you have a YouTube too, right? Well, I guess it's just under Patrick's name, right? Patrick yeah, it's Togan. just under my name, and I just post a bunch of stuff from the old scene and the new scene, and and anybody who wants to have their album on my channel, I post it. Yeah, it's like a video music blog. Mm. Uh, as for me, drop my channel a follow so you always know when I go live. You can also sub to get access to the interviews before they hit YouTube and the streaming uh, services, as well as some exclusive emotes. Uh, find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. YouTube folks, if you enjoy this, please drop a like, tickle the notification bell, and subscribe. It's a great way to support me for free. Check out my music, The Sound That Ends Creation, at thesoundthatendscreation.bandcamp.com. Uh, my next guest is Black Sheep Wall. Join us, <gasps> join us this Wednesday, the 7th, at 7 p.m. Central, right here at twitch.tv slash the cast of ends creation for no the live way. cast right yeah it should be pretty freaking sick man that's sick i love <laughs> that i'm not sure how you put us right between chris arp and black sheep wall but yeah fuck. <laughs> this is the filler week <laughs> <laughs> no no not at all not at all uh but oh uh, thanks God. for being here guys hope you all had a bit of fun yeah yeah always. thanks for having us always fun it's always great Absolutely. thanks for everyone in the chat and thanks for everyone who listens to i want to be your friend we really appreciate yes. it all of those Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You guys are uh, welcome back anytime. And uh, thank you guys for watching and listening.